groups. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. That's right everyone, my first sponsor. Very exciting. I feel so legit. Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me all right? Okay, okay, great. Um, I'm working from home and you may well be too, especially at the moment. I mean, I mean I'm actually taking a break from my brick-based home in favour of my other home. Nature. But this working from home or garden malarkey isn't actually unusual for me as I generally do it anyway. Surely then I should know exactly what it entails. I wouldn't go on a roller coaster without knowing the risks or benefits. I wouldn't smoke a cigarette without knowing the risks or supposed benefits. I wouldn't be a foxy lady without knowing the risks or benefits. So surely working from home shouldn't be any different. So inspired by recent events that I'm going to minimally reference here, except for a little hashtag doodle, I've dug up the science behind the benefits and risks of working from home. And I've split it into little subsections because who doesn't love a good subsection? Uh, and I think in my pinned comment I'm going to try and link the timestamps of each subsection below so keep an eye out for that if there's something you're particularly interested in. Subsection 1, being apart from other people. Working from home means you're going to see fewer people than if you had to travel into work. This is pretty obvious, right? Both in terms of colleagues and people that you see on your commute. And being apart from other people is beneficial in terms of preventing disease spread. The fewer people you come into contact with, the less likely you'll be infected by viruses and bacteria that they have within them. At least viruses and bacteria that spread in the air or via surfaces. This benefit is especially important for people who are at higher risks of getting ill or for the general public during, say, a pandemic, but we're not going to talk about one of those. The benefit of being apart from others is also mediated in some part by preference. Some people prefer to work alone, some people find it impossible to concentrate and be calm without being surrounded by a group of people. Whatever your preference is though, total social isolation is bad. We humans are social creatures in the sense that we've developed throughout history because of our communities. Our language comes from our need to communicate, our history is built around families and civilizations. There's a reason that solitary confinement is seen as a severe punishment. It's because it completely messes with your psychology. Your whole brain is geared up to constantly remind you that social interaction and companionship and community are all good things. So even if you prefer to be on your own, you still need some kind of connection to somebody. It doesn't have to be a huge social group, it can just be one person that you feel like you can really rely on. This need for socialising is mediated by various chemicals in your brain. Ones I've mentioned before include dopamine, science words, dopamine, it's a science word, which acts as a little chemical reward in your brain, and oxytocin, oxytocin which is associated with bonding between two people. There's also a third chemical which isn't talked about as often and that is beta endorphin. I'll do it, science word, beta endorphin. And beta endorphin is thought to be key for group bonding. There are tons of experiments that have highlighted the importance of these three chemicals in particular, but here's a quick fave of mine because anyone who knows me knows I love to draw the curtain back on a weird science experiment. <laughs> In this experiment, people played a game where if they pressed a button at the right time, they got a reward. This reward was either an in-game money reward or a social reward, which was literally just a picture of a man looking like this. I kid you not, here he is. What a happy chappy. <laughs> so he was what was representing the social reward. People's brains were then monitored during the games and it was found that reward areas of the brain were activated both when the reward was monetary or when it was literally just a grinning man, suggesting that we feel a sense of reward from positive social interactions just as we would from winning money. Other than that one experiment, there is tons of evidence to show that a need for social interaction is hardwired into our brains. So what happens if we don't get it? Not seeing anyone all day can be a very real possibility when you're working from home. What are the risks of that? Well, the main risks relate to loneliness. Loneliness has a lot of side effects. It can lead to disturbed sleep, a higher level of cortisol, which is a hormone associated with stress, and a weakened immune system. Each of these then has further knock-on effects, but they also all kind of feed into each other. I talked a lot about the link between stress and the immune system in my last video about the anti-stress vaccine, which you can check out if you want. But to summarize, the two are really linked. And so if loneliness links to all of these things and all of these things link to each other, 
It's easy to see how repeatedly experiencing any of them could lead you to a situation where you feel really not great. That can seem frightening and a lot to take in, so let's focus on solutions. The thing with loneliness is that to overcome it, you don't need tons of social support. As long as you feel supported, then that's enough to overcome those negative health effects. That means that online contact, phone calls, online video gameplay, these are all things that can help beat loneliness. It's the quality of social contact that matters, not the quantity, so scrolling through social media probably isn't the best option. The scientific studies I've read on the matter talk about perceived loneliness, so that means if you feel supported, then you're sorted. So the way to avoid the risks associated with being apart from other people is making time to interact with other people. That way you get the virus fleeing benefits without the social isolation. Speaking of making time, that brings me smoothly onto my next subsection, for which I'm moving to another place. Magic! I'm inside! <laughs> Subsection 2. Scheduling Humanity isn't just built on social interactions. There's another key brick in our species' foundations, and that's schedules. So I just googled to check that bricks are in foundations, and they are, but so is preservative-treated lumber. So... There's another key slab of preservative-treated lumber in our species' foundations, and that's schedules. Now obviously that doesn't mean that we've always had a 9 to 5 with a scheduled in clock off time and a break in the middle for a sandwich, more that our bodies run on rhythms, circadian rhythms to be precise if you want to use the science word. A circadian rhythm is just a bodily function that matches up to a 24 hour pattern and we've got loads of them. An alertness rhythm, a hunger rhythm, a sleepiness rhythm, a stress level rhythm, a body temperature rhythm, your body's chemicals are following a biological schedule driven by an internal clock, which is a part of your brain known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, but we don't need to go into much detail on this even though I studied it at uni and bloody loved it. The point is that you were built to function rhythmically, and if those rhythms are messed with, then that can have an impact on your health. To try and maintain these patterns, your body uses external factors to try and judge whereabouts in your daily rhythm it should be. These external factors are known as Zeitgebers, which is German for time giver. Your body latches onto these time givers in a process known as entrainment, which makes sense because you're like training yourself to match to the rhythm of that Zeitgeber, right? An obvious sight giver is light. Light, in very simple terms, suppresses the release of the hormone melatonin, which normally makes you sleepy. So the more light there is, the less melatonin you have, so the less sleep you are. The less light there is, the more melatonin you have, and so the more sleep you are. Perfect. But the thing is, we don't really depend on sunlight that much. We have artificial lights that can be on when we're meant to be sleepy, and so the Zeitgeber of light has been well and truly messed with. But even without light as a time giver, it's still okay, because we've got other aspects of our life that tell our bodies whereabouts in our daily schedules we are. These other Zeitgebers can include exercise, social interaction, and eating and drinking times. So you can keep your body's rhythm in check by keeping to a regular-ish schedule of these actions. In fact, while we're on the topic, here's another quick weird experiment for you, this time from the 70s. In this experiment, people spent four days living in a normal light-dark cycle, and then after that, they were sent to the tunnels. Yes, they were sent to live in darkness for four whole days. This is where I re-emphasise that this study was done back in the 70s, where health and safety precautions maybe weren't as rigorous. But who am I to judge? If you're from the 70s, tell me. Were you ever at risk of being made to live in a tunnel? Comment below. But despite living in darkness, the subjects were kept to a strict schedule of meal times and social interaction. It was found that people's bodies still followed their circadian rhythms, whether they were in a normal light-dark situation or in a dark situation with a strict schedule, suggesting that scheduling could help keep your body's biological processes on track. So how does this all relate to working from home? Well, one of the big potential benefits of working from home is being able to have a little bit more control over your schedule. 
I, for example, have quite a bad concentration dip at 2 p.m. often, and I know I work better in the evenings, so I shift a bit of my work to the evenings, and it's great, I love it, it works well for me. Now, it's worth quickly noting here that, especially at the moment, there'll be quite a lot of people who are newly working from home who are still having to match their office work schedules because their whole office is working from home. In this case, it's likely you still have a pretty strict schedule, but a little bit of freedom around it still. So let's call this version Schedule Control Light. Whether you're totally in control of your own time or just a little more than normal, it's still a very powerful position to be in. And with great power comes great need for scheduling. When you're working from home, it is so easy to slip into the habit of not having clear-cut timings for things. Sleep time, wake time, eat time, social time, they all blur together until you're kind of doing all of them and none of them at once. Or one day you're eating your dinner at 6pm and another day you're eating it at midnight. It's safe to say that this kind of behaviour confuses the hell out of your body and leads to major disruptions in your circadian rhythms. And that has all sorts of side effects as it knocks your body out of whack. For example, you find it harder to sleep so that affects your focus and concentration and ability to work. Think about jet lag, that's a form of circadian rhythm disturbance that quite a few people can relate to. Not having a clear schedule can have a similar impact. And long-term circadian rhythm disturbances have been associated with mood disorders such as depression and bipolar disorder and even neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So it's definitely something that needs to be taken seriously. But as with our social isolation issue from earlier, some solutions are relatively simple. Just try to have some kind of schedule because your body literally needs it. And it doesn't have to be draconian. Like I said, a big benefit of working from home is being able to make your schedule your own. And I'm really bad at following a strict timeline, but something as simple as having general wake and sleep times and a set time for lunch can already make a big difference. And importantly, please set a time when you're gonna finish work. That is a note to myself too. Set a finish work time, please. Basically, have similar time landmarks that you'd have if you were working in an office, but tailor them a bit to suit you. And if you're going to divvy up your time, you should probably divvy up your space too, which is a very smooth segue onto my next subsection. Subsection 3, workspace. Can I just quickly say that while looking up the psychology of workspaces, I very quickly came across the career of space psychologist, and all I can Say to that is yes please. You've probably been told before that when you work from home you should try and separate your work time and your free time. Not just mentally but physically too. In other words you should have a space where you work and a space where you can relax. The reasoning behind this makes sense. If your brain frequently recognises two things together then it'll start associating them as being somehow connected. There's a theory in neuroscience that relates to this and it's about the idea of concept cells. Neuroscience theory, concept cells. This is the idea that you have brain cells that specifically react to one thing. They were originally given the nickname grandmother cells because the idea was explained as, oh, you have brain cells that go off when you see your grandma. But now they're also sometimes referred to as Jennifer Aniston cells because apparently her face is often used when they're studied. While the idea that you have some brain cells dedicated to the concept of your grandma, some to Jennifer Aniston, some to a dodecahedron and some to a penguin, seems absolutely wild, it's actually recently been mathematically proven to be possible and that absolutely blows my mind. But the thing is with concepts is they don't have set definitions and they can start to get connected. If you always see Jennifer Aniston with your grandma then you're gonna start associating the two. And so Jennifer as a concept in your brain and your grandma as a concept in your brain are going to become one concept. Bringing it to a work from home context, if you always see your bed with your work email, but you also always see your bed when you're ready to sleep, then you're gonna start connecting those concepts. And even if the theory of concept specific cells in your brain isn't quite right, the psychology of it still stands. You're gonna draw associations between things you see together a lot. And so that's a scientific argument for having separate work and chill spaces. Of course, if you're able to have a separate bedroom and workspace and kitchen and bathroom, bathroom then congratulations well done to you honestly but a lot of people don't have that available to them if you are one of
of those people, don't worry, there are other things you can do. Examples of these include having work-specific clothes that you take off when you're done working, listening to work-specific music or background noises, or even just facing a different part of your room when you know you're working. My method is actually wearing makeup. I know I mean business when I've bothered putting it on, and so when it is on, I feel like I've got to be productive. So the benefits of working from home space-wise include being able to have your own space, make it your own, cook your own meals if you've got access to a kitchen, but the risk is that you might end up muddying together your chill time and your work time. And that means you can't relax when you're not working, but you can't really focus when you are, and that's only going to stress you out. Which brings me on to my final subsection, subsection 4, de-stressing, aka relaxing. There are loads of benefits of working from home and not just the ones that I've mentioned already. Others include not having a boss physically around you breathing down your neck, not having colleagues physically around you that you're constantly comparing yourself to as long as you're not checking what they're doing on social media because that's stressful. But those benefits can all help to reduce stress. But let's be honest here, working from home isn't an easy ride and it's a lot harder to adjust to than I certainly thought it would be. And so for the reasons already highlighted in this video, it can be quite a stressful experience and stress is bad. As I've mentioned already in this video and mentioned in my anti-stress vaccine video, it's pretty well covered that it's not a good thing. So when working from home, just be aware that you need to try and keep your stress levels low. And there are loads of ways you can do this, some of which include not constantly scrolling through social media, as I've talked about already, and having set times that you check the news. Otherwise, it does just feel like a constant wash of bad. And in the same theme of keeping work and relaxed time separate, you can do things that distract your mind, like baking or drawing or gardening. I did some of that the other day and forgot what an absolute dream it was. Or there's puzzles or podcasts or games or YouTube videos that you find relaxing and interesting and fun and chill. The idea of letting work time be focused on work and free time be focused on being free is so, so important. And you can do it in small ways too. If you're doing anything enjoyable, really take a moment to hone in on all the sensations. If you're eating a meal or taking a bath or drinking a nice hot cup of tea, just really enjoy it, you know? That's why I sniff my food so much. I'm just taking it all in. I think that's a fact about me. I always sniff my food. And what? There's nothing wrong with that. And of course, a major de-stressor you've no doubt heard of is being outside. <laughs> there are a lot of neighbours with their windows open that I think hate me right now. From reduced levels of cortisol, which is the hormone associated with stress, to reduced blood pressure, the benefits have been shown in many studies. But we're not sure whether those benefits come directly from being in nature or from side effects associated with being in nature, such as getting more exercise. But there is some evidence that nature itself is having an effect, specifically trees. Trees release substances called phytoncides. Kind of quiet science word to avoid annoying the neighbours too much. Phytoncides. These phytoncides, when breathed in, could help boost your white blood cell count and so help your immune system. Of course, with new rules at the moment about how much we're allowed to go outside, not everyone has trees to sniff. Check your privileged tree sniffers. But don't worry, green space benefits can, to some extent, come from street greenery or urban parks. One study even found that having flowers out at work can help you relax. And that last one also provided me with this sample to add to my list of fave, oddly specific study descriptions. 31 male office workers were included in the present study. The subjects were exposed to 30 unscented pink roses brackets rosa decora arranged in a cylindrical glass vase for four minutes thank god they were unscented scented roses make me think of my grandma which make me think of another thing that really stresses me out is feeling like my brain is going stale and i always get this because i'm really bad at focusing on more than one big task at once so it means i get really really bored of the one task i'm focusing on so to overcome this i've started scheduling in time where i make my brain work in a slightly different way and my new spot Sponsor Brilliant have really helped me out with that. Brilliant have an app and a website where you can learn maths and science through doing challenges. By solving problems and building up your knowledge bit by bit, you end up understanding concepts that you might have found intimidating before. They think that the best way to learn something is by doing it, and that's something that really works for me. I really agree with that. But what's really worked for me recently in particular is their daily challenges. These are thought-provoking tasks, each with a little introduction that explains the theory behind it. 
I schedule them in for when I know I often have an energy dip because it lets my brain focus on something else and kind of energises it. And also when I manage to complete one, it makes me feel really satisfied. And if I happen to find the daily challenge a bit tricky, it's really easy to trace back to the course that it's from, work through some easier problems and then tackle that trickier problem at a later date. So if you feel your brain going stale, I can really recommend Brilliant. And I can also set you up with a sweet deal. If you go to brilliant.org slash sofsnotes, you can sign up for free. Look at that, I've got my own URL, that's wild. And also the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. And that's the subscription I've got and I'm loving it so far. When it comes to enjoying working from home, a lot of it comes down to personal preferences. Some of us are lone wolves, some of us like to work in a group, some of us like to work alone with rustly trees, but knowing that people are watching us at home. <laughs> And normally, some of us can try and mould our careers based on these preferences, but that's not a privilege many of us have at the moment. And yes, I know I said I won't talk much about that, but let's face it, there are tons of stressors that are completely out of our control at the moment. It's a really difficult and weird time. But hopefully the advice I've given here, backed by science, can help make things a little bit easier. I know that doing things like separating work life from chill life and having set schedules is often easier said than done. I am frankly terrible at following my own advice. But making this video has actually reminded me that there are small small manageable things I can do to help improve my home working life. And I hope it's helped you to some extent too. All right, that is it for now everybody. Like this video if you like it, share it if you share it, subscribe if you subscribe it, tweet me if you want to tweet me, follow me on Insta if you want to do that, and comment if you have a comment. Why don't you tell me about your working from home situation? Are you new to it? Are you old to it? How are you finding it? Are you still going into work? What, what's happening with you? And that means that all is left to say is thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and remember to keep two metres apart from each other. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons with an extra special shout out to Terry Cox and Adam Dollinger. There are tons of experiments that have highlighted the importance of these three chem- But the thing is, we don't really depend on sunlight that much very more. But the thing is, we don't really depend on sunlight that more. There are a lot, there are a lot, there are a lot. No. There's a robin, there's a robin just over there. Oh my god, it's eating a worm right there. Nature. Is that right?